Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation on inter-blockchain protocols with the Isabel Infrastructure Framework. My name is Florian Kammerler and this is joint work with my colleague Uwe Nestmann. I'm at Middlesex University London, also as affiliated with Technische Universität Berlin, that's the university of my colleague Uwe Nestmann. What are inter-blockchain protocols? Inter-blockchain protocols short IBC is a concept that is um, developed in industry and serves to provide reliable and secure communication between deterministic processes which run on blockchains on different independent blockchains not just one but a heterogeneous set of blockchains there are some there's a sort of practical application which has been developed um, behind the people who, or by the people who developed this concept of IBC, and uh, this is the Cosmos Hub, which is one which they, they name themselves as the first of thousands of interconnected blockchains and um, want to facilitate the transfers between blockchains. So that's the main motivation. My main motivation is to promote the Isabel Infrastructure Framework. Um, which is a framework, basically it's an extension of Isabel HOL, the Interactive Theorem Prover, and it's um, designed to provide specification support and proof for systems of the access policies and state transition semantics. Typical applications include IoT systems, airplane security, um, so like at the policy level, then also auction protocols. So we've done a whole lot of different applications. And so this is another interesting application. So the blockchains already came about when we did a sort of more a bigger case study on our IoT project uh, for healthcare systems. And we kind of, kind of it, at some point, we in included some, some notion of blockchain, which we kind of improved for this work. Um, Apart from just promoting our formal framework, um, it is, this is also about clarifying incentives of the IBC concept and particular security incentives. And here's the first um, property that we've identified here as a sort of more abstract formal property, which we call global consistency, and which kind of corresponds to an insight into the IBC concept in saying the IBC is really a blockchain of blockchains. If you want to, rather than listen to me or look at the slides, or at the same time want to have a look at how our formalization looks like, um, you can have a look at this um, GitHub um, where the sources were well, all needed, the relevant sources from the infrastructure framework together with this particular IBC.THY development are available. Roughly, what are inter-blockchain protocols? Just to give you an idea. So IBC, as I said, allows communication between different types of blockchains. And one of the main concepts that enables this communication is the idea of having a relayer process. And it's easy, most easiest understood by looking at that picture at the bottom, which is taken from the original specification of IBC and there you have the relay and the center between two different here called distributed ledgers A and distributed ledger B, which are the two blockchains that want to communicate. And the relay process is the logical core of the IBC. It's considered to be outside any of the blockchains, so they call this off-chain. And it's the responsibility of this process is to relay IBC data packets between the blockchains meaning to kind of scan one blockchain, figure out whether there's a consensus of a certain execution, transaction, smart contract, and then execute it by submitting it to potentially another blockchain. So the main functions of the relay is that he can scan the states of blockchains and then he can submit data. Here's an overview of the Isabel infrastructure framework. Um, as I said, it's a generic framework, and in this particular case, we now embed the application IBC 
into that framework. That happens by building on top of that stack of um, framework theories, a adapted infrastructures for IBC theory, which is basically reusing um, exist the existing infrastructure um, theory of Isabel and just adding, extending slightly the existing definitions data types. And the whole thing is based on these other three boxes, which are purely generic and they, they don't need to adapt, be adapted or changed for this particular application. So they really have that clear generic framework character. And the first one is a formal notion of refinement, which is called the model transformation here, which is potentially a misnomer, but it just is a refinement, um, which is consists of like a formal definition of like um, mapping one specification to um, to another more abstract specification and then based on that um, an idea of a property preserving refinement that helps to support a stepwise development of specifications to a more practical implementable specification and the refinement came about and in, in using attack trees which are um, a common security formalism which we've embedded into Isabel HOL and um, attack trees and refinement are two activities that we consider or that we propose as part of a security formal security engineering process which allows us to um, meander between to move between um, attack analysis and then using found attacks, the formal description of the found attacks to improve um, the system specification by doing a refinement that excludes that attack and leads to a more secure system specification, a more refined, more secure system specification. The attack trees and obviously also the refinement are based on an underlying general specification of Kripke structures, um, and branching time temporal logic CTL, Conserv which is embedded as a conservative, all of this is a conservative extension of Isabel HOL. Ledgers are the first step um, of expressing blockchains. Before we do that, um, we also um, extend the infrastructure or we adapt the infrastructures which contain actors and actions, and we specify the action scan and submit for actors because our relayer, which is going to be an actor, is um, the one who can do scan and submit actions in this blockchain model. We can reuse the idea of labeled security labeled data or privacy labeled data, which comes from the decentralized label model. DLM, so we call this type DLM, which is basically um, a possibility of specifying owners and readers, so actors who are owners and readers of certain data items, and they are then paired with data items. And um, we also um, make use of the idea of having privacy preserving functions, which we can define or which are defined already in the infrastructure framework as a type label fun, which is functions that map label data to label data while preserving the security label, the, the, the first element in the pair of um, type DLM of that um, labeled dot data label type. Now the definition of a ledger is given simply by a type definition, which is actually just an abbreviation. So a type synonym um, called ledger, which is defined as a function type from the simple data type to DLM times note set option, where the option is just a common trick to simulate partial functions. Um, option basically is none or some um, is a lifting of, of a base type here, the type DLM times node set to um, 
to include the possibility of this being undefined and expressed as non. So this is a common technique to simulate partial functions, which is necessary in Isabel HOL because all functions are total. So by this type, basically what happens is that we assign for each data item, we assign a pair to the data item or potentially non nothing because of partial function. And this pair expresses the unique, the idea is that it's a unique label and a set of nodes, which are the locations in our blockchain, where this, or in, in, in the blockchain set, where this data resides. So where, where what is the residence, what I call the locations of residence. So where is the data in the blockchain? And this should be unique. And the uniqueness is given automatically because it's defined, this type is a function type. So implicitly, we have that uniqueness property, which in, in earlier instantiation of this formal model, we actually expressed that as a type definition, but it's much more elegant and simpler done in this way by actually um, defining a type and then deriving the important property of uniqueness, which is given here as a lemma, ledger def prop, which says for all ledgers, for all data, either there is the ledger has no data, it has no, no entry for that data item D, or there exists unique um, label and a unique location set such that this data item in the ledger has this um, 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 label and location set. So this basically says that there is a unique um, representation in the in the ledger, so there can't be can't have the data the same data with two different entries in the blockchain. Um, now we want to model various um, blockchains and we want to model communication. So we have to think about how the communication is going to happen. And so we define first um, something which we call your smart contracts, which are very, very abstract notion of messages between two actor identities that um, do something with labeled data. So we have the send and receive. I display only the send and receive um, messages, which are the two constructors which take inputs identity, identity DLM data and map it to a, a new element of data SC fun. In the theory, you'll see there are also a couple more which I omit for this um, presentation because they're only about a blockchain internal communication and we are, we are focusing on the, on the sort of global perspective here between uh, the communication between blockchains. Um, then now we, we use this idea, which is um, part of the framework to use um, an, a graph, which contains basically, which represents basically the state of an infrastructure. It's called iGraph. And um, we basically reuse um, the basic data structure of a graph, a node times node set. Um, and we extend it here for this application with a ledger. Um, in this in this graph structure, there's a ledger contained in there. And in particular, there's also a map from nodes to SC fun list sets. So basically, we're using the SC fun um, in, a, in, a, in a way of um, keeping transaction records in each particular node. So for each node, has its own view on what's actually happening. This is an important, to have it parameterized by node is an important um, ingredient to then um, talk more explicitly, explicitly later about consensus, to talk about different views of different nodes of what's actually happening in a blockchain. So this iGraph structure is the basic state representation of a particular blockchain. Um, the other component that comes with the infrastructure framework, which can be, which is added here, is the policy. And this is, um, a, the idea is that we have local policies for each node, um, for each node in the, in the I graph, you can have um, a, a, a policies attached to it, which then can be used to derive a, a global policy. Um, the policy in this case, I'm not gonna talk much about because it's actually quite simple. Um, the main thing is that the relayer, which is an actor, is enabled to um, do the scan and the submit operations in any of the blockchains. But um, 
in future refinements this could be used to be a bit more specific about um, access control policies and stuff like this so the relayer um, and the set of blockchains and the consensus are the, the main missing elements here before we can move on to properties so what, what we do to actually represent the, the protocols um, we, we use a similar view as already been used by Larry Paulson is inductive approach to security protocols where protocols are basically sets of traces so representing somehow the view that the ex all possible executions and parallel executions of a protocol are just kept in a set of traces representing all the different stages of the execution of a protocol this is a classic approach also more even before used in csp the blockchain set as we're looking at several blockchains who communicate with that which are, with each other and are orchestrated by the relayer basically the blockchain set now contains an IBC protocol um, an infrastructure list which is the list of all the involved blockchain and one dedicated blockchain which is uh, which, which is the infrastructure representing the the relayer which is the third um, input to this infs constructor of the data blockchain set consensus we keep as completely abstract because we can have different um, consensus algorithm and at the moment of specifying IBC we want to abstract from concrete consensus algorithms they can be later specified in a dedicated local there's an example given in the Isabella specification so for here the consensus is just a constant that um, for each blockchain so infrastructure input um, returns um, a mapping from blockchain set to blockchain set basically saying what is the next state what is the consensus on what should be the next state the ibc state transition semantics is then defined by instantiating the generic state machine notion that comes with the isabel infrastructure um, framework and which is a is a axiomatic is based on an axiomatic type class called state which is part of the um, underlying theory of Kripke and CTL and it can be instantiated to any any type and then for this new type we inherit all the underlying theory of CTL Kripke structures at tech trees refinement which is part of the framework and we can then specify for this particular application what is the concrete semantics so in this case I'm just gonna show you like one the first rule on um, scan which basically just shows you roughly gives you an idea of how what level these um, our semantics works at so the first thing we have to look is the last line where it says okay IL which is a set of blockchains so an infrastructure list um, representing blockchain set goes over into the next step of the tr state transition relation into IL prime if all those conditions hold and those conditions basically describe how a new send a smart contract message is added into the protocol uh, at in the in the relayer and um, we can also see here that the consensus IIL equal IL prime basically means like here we can in an abstract way say that the that the infrastructure I that is involved here um, in this in this particular scanning action of the relayer is um, has a consensus that this is the next state based on this formal definition of IBC we can already as a proof of concept show that our model allows expressing consistent data representation across different blockchains and this is done by first of all defining a notion of global consistency which which um, expresses that individual ledgers in an IBC blockchain set agree on access control and residence of data so global consistency IL for a, a blockchain set IL is expressed as that for all infrastructures IR prime for all individual blockchains IR prime which are in that blockchain set IL so that's in BC IL is like means they are in the blockchain set we have for all data the ledgers of each of the involved blockchains agrees on the label and the, the residence of the data so they're consistent this is what 
consistency means and uh, what we can express um, as part of our model and then we can now prove a theorem that consistency is preserved by our semantics so we can say if uh, there is global consistency for a blockchain set and then this blockchain set goes over in a straight trans state transition semantics into another in one step into another blockchain set state then the global consistency is also valid in this next state. This shows that, um, well, it's a proof concept. The proof is done in Isabel. It's uh, it's because the structures are fairly involved, although it's very abstract. It's pretty um, fairly complex for such a first application. Um, but the proofs are all done, and they can be done with a, with very good support of, of Sledgehammer. So making a lot of the um, less interesting, trivial um, lemmas are proved automatically. So um, that's a good exercise and a good first step. And in conclusion, I can summarize that we provide an abstract model of inter-blockchain protocols using the Isabel infrastructure framework. Um, and as a first result, we could express and prove a global consistency preservation property. And this first result corresponds to some sort of insight that the IBC really is a blockchain of blockchains and um, one of our next important steps that we um, started working on now is to actually talk to our industrial colleagues um, who are producing this concept and um, organize like a collaboration uh, for future maybe joint research projects. Well, that's all I have to say. I'm looking forward to the discussion on Sunday and thank you very much for listening to this.